What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a ventilated facade within Revit. Now ventilated facades are quite common and they're really useful and really efficient. They allow you naturally to cool down the facade a little bit and uh, that's I think that's quite cool and it's a bit difficult to model something uh, within Revit just because it's, uh, it's a wall, a facade, of course it's a wall but it includes some structural elements, some vertical structural elements that are whole holding the whole facade in place. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do something like that within Revit. And just to make it a bit more interesting, I am going to be showing you how to create a perforated facade, both a just a regular perforated facade with maybe some pinholes, something like that, or a custom facade where you can have custom perforated patterns on your facade. So I, th I thought this would be really cool to, uh, to model in Revit. And I actually model out like an, an opening that looks like a B for like Balkan architect. Anyways, that, that, that's what I'm showing you in this tutorial. Now, before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials plus one advanced Balkan architect course. If you want to access all of my courses, I've got over 40 hours of content. Uh, check out the first link in the description. It takes you to my Patreon. Also there you can find all of my uh, project files. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. As you can see, we're going to be starting from scratch. So here we are at the uh, Revit's homepage. I'm just going to go here to models and then to new, and I'm just going to go with the regular architectural template. Hit OK, and there we go. And now, as soon as Revit uh, starts up, let's get straight into it, and let's first create a structural portion of the wall. So I, I want to create the structural part as well as insulation, and then we're going to get on to our uh, to our ventilated facade. So so uh, for that, I like to go and just use the wall tool for that. So just open up your uh, wall tool. Here we have the generic, the basic generic uh, uh, 200 millimeter wall. Let me just go here into edit type and edit that structure. So let's duplicate this one and let's call it a uh, ventilated facade wall. And then I'm just going to add part one. and then just dash part one because this wall will be out of two parts. Okay, so hit OK and then go here into edit and here for the thickness uh, for the structural part, let's go with uh, 50, 150 millimeters and here for the material, we can go with some concrete. So let's search for concrete. Let's see, let's go with the cast in place gray and I usually like to change the cut pattern to something like uh, the diagonal cross hatch. So let's go with that, hit apply, OK, and there we go. Now I'm just going to select the core boundary and insert a new layer and this layer will be the insulation layer. So let's add here the thermal uh, insulation or uh, thermal air layer. Now here I'm going to and for the thickness, let's go again with 150 millimeters. And for the material, let's search for insulation and see what Revit has on offer. And we can maybe go either with rigid insulation or let's see what else do we have here. Yeah, let's go maybe with this uh, exterior insulation. So, oops. Okay, so we already have that. Let's open that up and let's go with that one. Uh, I didn't check the patterns. Okay, so currently it has this uh, cut pattern. I usually don't like that. I like to go with a solid pattern and then I change the color to some uh, light yellow or orange and then we have this uh, really light yellow uh, color for our insulation material. So hit apply, okay, okay again. And there we go. Now we have our new ventilated facade wall. Now just zoom in and then let's do a quick segment. So I'm just going to do a segment like this. Now currently we can't see any of the layers. Uh, to see the layers we have to switch here to the fine level of detail. Now let me flip this on the other side. So I want the structural part to be on top and then the insulation part to be on bottom. Okay, so once we have uh, this uh, first structural part in place, now let's do the facade part. Now the reason that we do this in two parts is just because I want to have a facade that's uh, built as a curtain wall so we can have those all of those vertical and horizontal structural elements. So 
just go here to wall again and then let's go here to our storefront curtain wall and I'm going to go here into edit and duplicate this one and let's call it something different so I'm going to go with uh, let's call this uh, ventilated facade part 2 maybe add a little dash here in between and there we go. Uh, now uh, I have to make some changes for this, but for now let's just place uh, this curtain wall. So let's go, hit OK and go from one side to the other. I'm just going to flip it. As you can see, you can f use the space key to flip it on the bottom side. So it should be facing away from the wall. And then let's just do the whole segment. And there we go, this is what that looks like. So we have a curtain wall. Uh, now if you take a look at this curtain wall, uh, as you can see the uh, uh, glass elements, maybe if I go here into realistic, uh, the glass parts are kind of on the inside of these mullions. Now that's okay, that's usually how these curtain walls work. But what we need for this project is we want to have panels on, sitting on top of these uh, these structural mullions. So to achieve something like that, what you need to do is you need to go here and select this wall and then go into edit type. And then here we can see uh, we have the uh, we have the system panel glazed, so that's why we have that uh, that glass. And here underneath we have all of these uh, mullions. Now currently it's using the 50 millimeter by 150 millimeter mullion. Now the first thing that I like to do is I like to change the curtain panel from uh, glazed to solid, and hit apply. Okay, now as you can see it's no longer transparent. And if we zoom in, as you can see, there we go, we have that same panel. Now we have to make some adjustments to the mullion. As you can see, this mullion is way too large to be, re be representing the structural elements of the ventilated facade uh, wall. Okay, so for that, you need to go here to the project browser, scroll down a little bit and find the families uh, no, uh, nod. And then uh, expand that menu and find here, we have curtain wall mullions. Expand that menu as well. Then we have rectangular mullions. This is a rectangular mullion. Expand that one. And here we go. This is the one, the 50 by 150. Okay, so I'm just going to right click on this one and go to duplicate. And let's call this one ventilated facade. Malian, maybe. There we go. Now we can open this one and it will have the same properties as the other one, which is uh, the thickness is 150 uh, millimeters and the width is uh, 50 millimeters. And here, as you can see, that's 25 plus 25. And now first, uh, the thickness, I want to add just a little bit more thickness because I want my panels to be sitting on uh, with a little gap uh, in front. So basically for that what we need to do is we need to have uh, more than 150 just because our insulation layer is 150. So let's go with something like 180. Click OK there. Now this is uh, now this hasn't changed. The reason for that is just because uh, we haven't loaded this mullion into our uh, wall. So let's perhaps go to a level one floor plan to see it a bit better. Now uh, go here into edit type and here let's scroll down and go to vertical mullions and horizontal mullions. Now for this particular wall we don't really need any horizontal mullions so go and select none for all of these. So just go up here none, none and none. So we only need the vertical ones and here for the vertical ones let's go with the ventilated facade mullion and then select that one for all of these. There we go. Okay, so once this is selected, let's hit apply. Okay, delete mullions, and let's see what happens. There we go. So we have these uh, larger, uh, larger mullions that are sitting like this. But also this uh, panel is uh, a bit large. So let me go down to families. Uh, so here, this is where we have the facade. But let's open up the curtain panels as well. Uh, go with the system panels and then find the solid one and just double click to open up its properties. And for a ventilated facade, usually you would have something that's like, I don't know, probably like a centimeter thick at the most. So let's go with 10 millimeters. And here for the offset, let's go with the even 20. Hit apply. Okay. And this is what you get. As you can see, the panel is significantly smaller now.
Okay, so once we have done this, let's go back to our ventilated facade mullion and let's see what L what further changes can we make. So first, let's make an offset a bit larger, so uh, it's uh, it's kind of uh, the the panels should be sitting on top of this. So let's go with something like minus 60 millimeters and uh, for and let's hit apply okay so it's almost there so let's try minus 70 okay just a little bit more minus 75 and there we go now it's on the inside and the panels are joining up here and that's what we want to have uh, now just for the width of this thing we want to make it smaller so let's do five millimeters on each side making it a total of 10 millimeters and there we go so it looks like this it looks uh, more like the what this would look like in real life now you can just click OK and there you go you have your ventilated facade and I'll just go here to move find the bottom of this mullion and then just move the whole thing here to the intersection of these two layers and hit enter and there we go so we have the construction running vertically we have all of the panels if we go into 3d this is what those panels look like and we have that little gap in between for the air to pass through and to cool off the whole facade Okay, so now talking about these panels, let's see how can we make them perforated. So to make uh, openings on these panels, what you need to do is you need to modify either the material or the panel itself. Now modifying the panel itself is uh, a bit trickier, so let me start off with showing you how to modify the material and then later on I'm, I'm going to be showing you how to modify uh, the whole uh, panel. So. Let's go here and uh, let's go into our solid panel and here we have the option to change the material and there you can go and choose maybe some material for this. I usually tend to go with some aluminum material so let's see. There we go, let's go with this one. Here you can maybe change its appearance, things like that, but for now let's leave it like this, hit OK, apply OK, and now as you can see all of the panels change to that material. Now to add that perforation, let's open this back up, go to that aluminum material, go into appearance, and here we have the option for cutouts. Now with cutouts you can add perforations or openings or, well, cutouts, so you just have to check this option uh, here, uh, or, or for uh, cutouts and then here we have uh, it's currently at uh, this uh, is with uh, circles so you can just open that up and see what you have so as you can see there we go we have these circles and it looks like we have these circular openings so let's uh, drop down so here you can change the diameter you can make them a bit larger something like one uh, millimeter there we go. Now, looking at this sphere, you don't really see the scale of the th this thing, so what I like to do is open up this drop menu and then search for a scene, and then I like to go with the wall scene, or maybe with the glass curtain system, let's see what that would look like. There we go, so now we can see the perforations. Uh, maybe you can make it even larger, so something like... Uh, let's go with 10 millimeters, and then the center spacing has to be a bit larger. Okay, this is uh, way too large, so let's try two. And then the center spacing, let's make it larger, something like... Uh, let's go with three. There we go, this can look nice, and now you just hit apply, okay. And there we go, it uh, uh, applies those perforations. Now, as you can see, the it looks a bit odd, so let's try to make some adjustments. Let's, let's actually go back and make this a lot smaller. So let's go with 0.1 and then 0.2. Hit apply, OK, apply, OK. And there you go, now it looks a lot better and you have those perforations on your aluminum. Now, let's say you don't want to have something like this. You want to have maybe some more interesting patterns or something custom. So for that, let's go back here into our system panel. Let's go into our aluminum material and let's get rid of those cutouts. Hit apply, OK, and we're back to solid material. Uh, now, to make custom cutouts, unfortunately, you can't do it through material or and you can't really modify these panels. It's uh, really hard to modify them. So the only option that we have uh, is to go ahead and unpin one of the panels and then change it for the empty system panel option. So basically, you have an empty opening. And then what you can do is you can go here to Component, go to Model in Place. You can go with a simple generic model, and then let's call it a perforated panel. Hit 
hit enter, then go to set work plane, pick a plane, okay, and then let's pick the front face of this thing. So you just go uh, and come near this, uh, this panel, hit the tab key and then select it. There we go. And now you can just do a regular extrusion just from here to here. Perhaps go to south elevation uh, here to make it a bit easier to modify. And then here you can make any type of opening that you want to have. So maybe I can go with something that resembles my logo. So let me try something like that. There we go. I can go with B for Balkan. Hit finish. And there we go. Now we just have to adjust the size. And for that, we know that it's 10 millimeters. So just go minus 10. And there we go. Now it fits in perfectly. And there you go. You have your perforated uh, facade element. Now also select it, go add it in place. And then when you select this geometry, you can go ahead and change the material to that same aluminum material. So it fits in the rest of the facade. Okay, so there you go. That's how you make perforated ventilated facades in Revit. Uh, there, there, those are the two approaches. There are maybe some more approaches. Just do whatever works for you and what you found out works best in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you want to get the project files that I have created in this video or any of my other project files, check out my Patreon. First link in the description. Also, there you can find all of my courses. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.